So I talk to a lot of B2B marketers who are thinking about podcasting, but might not be quite ready to start their own show and instead are focusing on getting their leadership booked as guests on other podcasts. And I do think that that is a solid strategy, but there are pros and cons to it, especially compared to starting your own show. So I wanted to make this quick video to take a look at the pros and cons of being a guest on other podcasts versus starting your own show. So let's start with being a guest on other podcasts, and let's start with the pros. The first is that it's simply easier and it takes less time to be a guest on someone else's show than the time it takes to start your own podcast from scratch. I think that one is probably at the top of the list and kind of obvious. Another advantage to being a guest is that this can get your leaders in front of podcast audiences that are eager to hear from them. And there's good data that podcast listeners tend to listen to most or all of the episodes that they download. So you really have their undivided attention and they'll listen to pretty much everything that your leaders have to say. And at the end of the day, you get content that you can share that that's unique. It, it features your, not only your leaders' expertise and their knowledge as subject matter experts, but also their personalities. And so there's a lot of opportunity there to make a real connection with the host of the show and uh, with the audience of that podcast. Now, there are also some cons to being a guest on other shows. So one is that you have very little control over the flow and the focus of the discussion. That's really up to the host and producer of the podcast that you're being a guest on. And it's usually kind of a one-off. You probably get one chance to be a guest on that podcast. If you're really good, maybe they'll have you back. But typically, you do one interview, and that's pretty much it. And also, it takes a not insignificant amount of time to find the right shows to get your leaders booked on, to actually get them booked. That's not necessarily very easy. Once they're booked, to get them prepared. And then when the podcast comes out, to do what you can to promote that episode because the producers of the podcast are going to expect that. So there is a decent amount of time involved uh, in being a guest on other podcasts. That being said, at the end of the day, it really can be a very good strategy if you're able to find the right shows, get your leadership booked. It's certainly well worth trying, and if you get a lot of value, then great. Now let's talk about starting your own show. One of the main advantages of starting your own podcast is that it's yours, and you have pretty much total control over the focus and the tone of the show. Of course, you decide who the guests are going to be, and you have opportunities to build relationships with those guests. You get to be the host of the show, meaning you're the main voice. You get to build an ongoing relationship with your audience. You get to create a lot of content, not just the audio version of the podcast, but you can also record video. You can turn every episode into a blog post and social content. And of course, you're in complete control over what that looks and sounds like. And over time, you're building up a library of content that's very convenient for your audience to engage with because they can listen to your show while they're doing other things. So it's pretty different than other kinds of content that you might be putting out there. Now, that being said, there are some disadvantages, of course, to starting your own show. The main disadvantage to starting your own podcast is simply time. It takes a considerable amount of time to build and launch a podcast from scratch usually takes at least a couple months, and there's a lot of planning and strategy involved. And then once the podcast is up and running, you're kind of on the clock, and you need to produce podcasts regularly. It's very important to have a consistent publishing schedule and stick to it. And so there's a lot of time that goes into finding and booking guests and recording interviews, preparing to do the interviews, 
and then actually producing the content. And then you got to build up your audience. There's time spent on promoting the show and getting it in front of people. And so this all adds up to quite a bit of time that you're going to need to spend. However, that being said, once you launch your show, once you get over that initial hump of planning and launching the show, and once you get into a rhythm of publishing regularly, it doesn't take nearly as much time. And in fact, it's much closer to the time that you would end up spending getting your leaders booked on other shows. It kind of tends to, to even out. And another advantage of having your own show is that you can still be a guest on other shows. You can still get your leaders booked on other podcasts. And you have the extra advantage of if you have your own podcast, when they're guests on other shows, they can use that as an opportunity to build your audience, to let that audience know about your podcast. In fact, that is one of the single best ways to promote a podcast. So as you can see, I think there are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. It definitely can pay very large dividends to find the right podcast and get your leaders booked on them. Uh, and at the same time, you can get a lot of value from starting your own podcast and being in control and really developing it over time. And the, again, the two are not mutually exclusive. You can start your own show and you can pursue guest opportunities on other podcasts. So I hope you found this video useful. If anybody wants to talk about the pros and cons of being a guest on podcast versus starting your own or talk about anything related to podcasting, I'm always happy to, to chat. You can reach me at jeremy at conversa.com. Thanks for checking out this video.